Welcome to Rack of the Week 110. This is a table that I've never played on before. This is at my friend's house. Uh, first time I've been able to play there. This is his basement table. It's a Brunswick medalist. And it's got four and a half inch pockets, so not a difficult table, but not a super hard table. Um, the pockets are, have a strange cut. The, the, the facings on the, on the short rails are a little bit shorter than the facings on this rail. That's how they got the pockets to be four and a half. It, it, that sounds funny. It might look weird, but it plays really well. The rack you're watching right now is uh, uh, the first rack of a 42 ball run. We're going to go through the second rack. This one's a kind of textbook, and so I'm going to just let it play really quickly, and then we'll talk about the second rack. I had a league match earlier today, and I played absolutely awful. And I'm, it's really strange because I felt in, in the rack that you're watching right now, I was executing very well, staying down well, stroking well. So I don't know why that happened, but a rough day for me. Uh, this is an interesting rack because, and I'm going to try and just let this thing play, hopefully. Um, so it's a difficult beginning because a high ball brings the cue ball up here. Now, I'm fortunate that it's here and I have an easy shot on the side. What if that ball wasn't there and the cue ball stopped way up on the head rail? This is how uh, Jason Shaw's run ended. The cue ball went right up into the pocket and scratched. So this isn't the best uh, result of a break shot, but a little bit fortunate that I could keep going. And I, I took an aggressive route by going right into that stack, just trusting that I'm going to open them up some and, and get a, uh, another shot, which I did. Now, I could have hit that ball just that I just hit harder to open these up more, but I felt I was in a good position, and this ball goes in this pocket. So if I can get the cue ball over here, kind of inside of this circle of balls, I'm going to be good, and I've got a ball for a break ball possibly in this five. I played position just there for the 10 ball in the corner. But I'm looking at it, and if I shoot the 10, then I've got to play one of these balls and come up here, and then I'm going to have to come back later and get this ball on the side. And I decide that I don't want to do that. I want to remove it now. So I just go ahead and shoot that now. And now I can, I can just ease the 10 ball in and play the 6 next or the 11. And I believe I end up playing the 11. And, and so this is, this is the key to this rack. I want to come up here. What I'd love to do is come up here and just gently touch the 8. Because I can play the 8 in the side later. That's going to give me position on this stripe to open these balls up. That was my plan, and it, I missed the eight and the other ball completely. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, darn. But luckily, the 12 ball does go. And my only route, well, not my only route, but what I decided to do is put some spin on the ball so that I can come out of this corner back up here. So what I'm trying to do is get back in this circle of balls. And see me, I want to slow down, slow down. I wanted the cue ball to stop here because then I have the angle to make this ball and tap those open. But I don't need to tap those open because once this ball's gone, one of these two balls goes in that pocket and then everything's open. So I'm, I'm picking them apart here. I'm, I'm no longer, no longer wanting to uh, open these up, but I, I am going to move the eight ball here. What I wanted to do was move the eight ball down to here. Then I've got this ball. And then either one of these balls, the eight or the one, can be a break ball. But that didn't work out, so I've got to keep working it. And so I think it's a mistake to shoot this ball now. Obviously, I could shoot, shoot this ball easily and, and make something happen here. But I've got a, the eight ball I don't think goes by the one. I didn't knock it down far enough. And so I'm, if I shoot this stripe now, I've got to come back around later and get the right angle on this one so I can pocket it without bumping the eight. Well... I have that angle now, so I've got to shoot it now. And now I can finally shoot this stripe, and uh, then one of these balls goes there. I believe the 15 ball goes there. And I'm going to play position for that now. Well, that's at least what I'm trying to do, and I didn't come far enough because this is a good pivot ball, the 7. If the ball, cue ball came up higher, I could play 15, then the 6, and then I could uh, play this, the 7 back in this side, or the other side, or come back up here and play it in the corner. There's lots of options to, to use the 7 to trans transition to the 8-ball break shot. Or, if the cue ball is up higher, I could play the 15, play the 7 in the side, 
and then just stop the cue ball here. And then I just shoot the six and come up here like this to get on my break shot or come around it to get on my break shot. So lots of options there, but I didn't come up far enough. So I've got to shoot the six and make sure I get up there. And that's why I went two rails instead of one. Because if I went one rail off the six, I might end up short again. By going two rails, I ensure that I get an angle. And so now I decide to play the seven in the same pocket. And you know me, keep the cue ball on this side of the shot line. And then you have a really reliable positional route to come over for the break shot. Now, I did, I did just there, I did what I keep doing. And I did it last week, I think, as well. It doesn't look like anything. This looks like a good shot, but I have too much angle. What I needed to do is slow down, walk around the table, look at the eight ball break shot and pick my spot. If I had done that, I would have chosen this spot and I would have played the seven to bring the cue ball over to here, which is a much better break shot. And I really think that's the difference between long runs and shorter runs. This is something I've noticed in my play a lot lately. Sure, I can make this ball and, and, uh, and it's going to open the rack really well. You, you, you'd hope it would open the rack well. As it is, look, <laughs> I've only got one shot and I'm elevated over a ball. And if the cue ball, if I had put the cue ball here for the break shot, I would definitely have been able to stun off the rack, have the cue ball in the open, have more choices of shots. So even though I got through this rack and I, and I do make this next ball and this, clear this next rack, oh, well, only if you go cue ball fouls only because I bumped the nine. So that's another reason why you want to get a better break. You don't want to be shooting over a ball and risk uh, bumping a, a ball and committing a foul. So um, pretty good rack. I, I like the way I worked through it. it could have, you could have gotten through that rack uh, multiple ways. And uh, the way it worked out, I, kinda, I, I you know, didn't quite get the cue ball where I needed but I, I've got things open. The only thing I didn't like, and it's something I really got to work in my game, I've worked on it so much over the last year, slowing down means so many things. And I've slowed down in a lot of ways, but I, I'm still not there yet. I, I got to take my time and walk around and look at the angles uh, if I want to get some higher, uh, higher runs more consistently. Hope you enjoyed that. That was a quick one. I got a one pocket tournament tomorrow. I got to go to bed early. And so I, so I can get there at 9 a.m. and set up the laptop computer. So check YouTube tomorrow uh, if you see this in time. Uh, but all day tomorrow, hopefully, the computer will be working. And we'll have live streaming of a one-pocket tournament. The uh, prime table is table one with four-inch pockets, a diamond with four-inch pockets. Should be some good matches, especially later on in the tournament. We'll have the, the best players playing in the quarterfinals, semis, and finals probably on that table. And I will try to have a commentator when we can, when there's one available. And I'm going to try to get some type of scoring system set up so we can know who the players are and what the score is uh, as it's running, as long as there's a person available to sit at the computer. So it's going to be kind of raw, but hopefully uh, we'll have it working well. Thanks for watching. See you next week.